So Professor Brand explains how the blight is damaging the earth, but I don't un I don't think that's right. I don't think it makes sense. Earth's atmosphere is 80% nitrogen. We don't even breathe nitrogen. Blight does, and as it thrives, our air gets less and less oxygen. The last people to starve will be the first to suffocate, and your daughter's generation will be the last to survive on Earth. Now you need to tell me what your plan is to save the world. We're not meant to save the world. We're meant to leave it. So I agree that Earth's atmosphere is 80% nitrogen and we breathe like 16% of the oxygen. But for the blight to breathe nitrogen, doesn't that mean it consumes it? I think that's right. But he says that we lose oxygen when the blight breathes nitrogen. Why, why yeah, would we lose oxygen if the blight is breathing nitrogen? Right, that doesn't seem to make sense to me. He would say it breathes both nitrogen and oxygen if it was consuming the oxygen, right? But he says right. it only breathes nitrogen, breathes and, nitrogen. Yet the, and yet the oxygen level is going down. It sounds like from his description, the oxygen level should be unaffected. That's right. I think that I think that's right. So if so, the nitrogen is consumed and the amount of air is decreasing, then the percentage of the atmosphere that's oxygen should increase. That's right. I suddenly start running four minute miles and just jack the shit. <laughs> just That's right. a cardio for days. Just no problem. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> so maybe he misspoke. Maybe he meant that the nitrogen, because it's so plentiful in the atmosphere, allows it to go crazy. Mm -hmm. And it does consume both nitrogen and oxygen. Just mostly nitrogen, just a little bit. Just, yeah. I would also be okay if he said that, like, that the blight uses the oxygen in some type of catalytic process and it breaks it apart. So it like thrives off the nitrogen, but destroys the oxygen. And like the more nitrogen we have, the more it thrives and the more it thrives, the less oxygen we have. Mm -hmm. But that's not what he said. Right. And you'd have to bind the oxygen into something. I'm also okay with that. If, if the blight would be a getter, if we would grab mm -hmm. the oxygen out of the air, then the mm -hmm. more blight you have, the less oxygen you have. Mm -hmm. I would be also, okay, but that's not what he said. Right. And as far as I understand, a lot of the oxygen in our atmosphere comes from plankton in the ocean. Oh, really? I think it's a substantial part. I don't know where the rest of it comes from. So maybe it's taking over. Jeez. It's like uh, suffocating out, other species. Right. Which is then dipping the oxygen. I could buy so that. He's, so he's assuming some intellectual leaps that Cooper can do. He's like, so it say nitrogen. for example, go ahead. Say, say for example, like like trees create take carbon dioxide and convert it into oxygen. All also just I guess anything with green, anything photosynthesis. And so if he's saying if blight survives of the nitrogen very well and then it kills the green leafy plants, then that reduces our oxygen replenish replen mm -hmm. replenishment replenishment. Mm -hmm. I could buy that. Yeah. But, so it's uh, like pushing out. Explain that, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess Cooper is a farmer, so he should know all this stuff. That's true. That's true. He's also an engineer. Oh, that's right. And it's it's obvious. Obvious. Moment slot. The, yeah. Trivial. Yeah, that's the physicist's way to do <laughs> With a moment thought, it's trivially noticed that it's this thing. And can, we, can we bring that back up? The, the last thing I want to mention average. is they're like, we've got problems on Earth. Solution? Let's leave. That's right. And what? <laughs> I mean, no matter how bad the Earth is, we're still surviving on the surface. We've got water, we've got the atmosphere, we're breathing it. Maybe everything's suboptimal. But if we go to Mars, we'll die within a minute on the surface. That's right. So, like, that's a harder thing to deal with than Earth. So it's almost like, shouldn't we fix Earth? Isn't that the easier operation? You're saying, like, Earth's not in a great shape, but it's, like, 10% off of perfect. Whereas going right. to Mars, like... Ooh, that's a big problem. You got to bring atmosphere. You got to bring water. You got to bring temperature control. You got to bring food. You gotta, that's that's a much harder problem. Why are we banding Earth? Exactly. And then not only that, they're not going to go to Mars, though. That would be too easy. They're going to go <laughs> through a wormhole right. and next to Saturn, next to a... Let's fucking like, like long hole. shot it. We're going to... the the Saturn is where the wormhole is. So like We're going to pass Io. We're going to pass titan we're going to go real yeah. close to the places that we've already thought about colonizing ah, fuck, the, yeah. fuck those no we don't we're, want them. we're going interstellar no, we're going interstellar. the moon nope nope mars nope gosh moon is not even attempted 
Because you could you could build domes on the moon, and then you could control the atmosphere in there. You could at least have it for enough time to figure out like what's the next plan, right? But even that's way harder than being on Earth, where you don't even need domes. That's right. That's right. It's dusty for a (laughs) while, but it's going to be a while before you start suffocating. You you have like an entire generation to figure it out, right? And the gener and you know that it's occurring, so you can light a fire under people's asses to figure it out. Instead, you keep them in secret. And then launch people into space. <laughs> NASA, come on. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Should have just dropped those bombs. Just, yeah, they screwed up. 